Hey everybody, welcome to the BibleCast Christian Video Podcast. I'm Jim Guy, your host, and I want to remind everyone to please take a look at our charities page on our website at www.thebiblecast.org to help us help others in need. Without further delay, please enjoy this week's episode of the BibleCast. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to the BibleCast Christian Video Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to the program. I'm Jim Guy, and I hope this Wednesday finds you doing good out there. A lot can happen in a week's time, can it? This time last week, I was in another state where it was warm and 80 degrees, and today I'm home and there's frost on the windshield of my truck. (laughs) It's crazy how fast seasons can change sometimes, especially this time of year. Being in this ministry, I get to witness all types of change in seasons, and I'm not talking about just the weather here either. I'm talking about change in the seasons of people's lives as well. I always get news of marriage proposals and babies being born and new jobs. There's just a baby born the other day, actually. Uh, Real exciting news people love to share with me. Unfortunately, I also hear the stories when the weather isn't so great in life, from tragedies and loss to drug abuse and death. There's a lot going on in this life, and it's tough for a lot of us. Each of us have to pass through several seasons as we go through out the years. Abraham Lincoln once quoted, in the end, it's not the years in your life that count. It's the life in your years. Makes sense. See, everyone has a set number of years here on earth, and everyone goes through the ups and downs of life. No one is different in that regard. The difference is how you come to weather the storms. Today, I want to find encouragement in God's Word to help us to face the challenges life has to throw at us from time to time and understand God's plan for us a little better. So stick with me as we look at how seasons change on this week's episode of the BibleCast. Today, I saw a really inspirational story about life that was pretty encouraging, and it made me think on it a little bit. It was online. I'm not really sure the author, but it was a story of a man who wanted who taught his sons an important lesson. This man had four sons, actually. He wanted his sons to learn not to judge things too quickly, so he sent them each on a quest, each at different times, to go and look at this a tree of some sort that was far away. The first son went in the winter, the second in the spring, third in the summer, and the youngest son went in the fall. When they had all gone and seen the tree, they came back and his father, their father called them to describe what they had seen. The first son said that the tree was ugly, bent and twisted. Well, it was winter time, and trees are going to look like that. The second said, no, it was covered with green buds when I saw full of promise. It was early spring. The third son that went in the summer disagreed. He said it was laden with blossoms, pink, smelled so sweet, and looked so beautiful. It was the most graceful thing he'd ever seen. The last son who went in the fall disagreed with all of them. He said it was ripe and drooping with fruit, full of life and fulfillment towards the end of its years. 
The father then explained to his sons that they were all right, you see, because they had each seen but one season of the tree's life. He then explained to them that you cannot judge a tree or a person by only one season that they're going through, and that the essence of who they are and the pleasure, joy, and love that comes from that life can only be measured at the end when all the seasons are up. He taught his sons that if you give up when it's, say, winter time, you'll miss the promise of your spring and the beauty of the summer and the fulfillment of your fall. You see, we shouldn't judge life by one difficult season. Don't let the pain of one season destroy the joy of all the rest. All of our days have been laid out before us since before time began, and every choice we make leads to a new journey. God has a predetermined plan for us, and all the ups and downs that come along with this wonderful life are all a part of His plan for us to learn and grow closer to Him, so His will can be fulfilled in us. Ecclesiastes 3.10 points that everything we do is chosen by God Himself. When he wrote Ecclesiastes, King Solomon was examining all of his life's achievements, and he wrote the book as a philosophical essay on the futility and emptiness of life apart from God. In verse 3, 10, and 11, he wrote, I have seen the God-given task with which the sons of man are to be occupied. He has made everything beautiful in its time. Also, he has put eternity in their hearts, except that no one can find out the work that God does from beginning to end. What the king is saying here is that every journey in life has a time to shine, but we can't always see the end game. Uh, We don't know what God's doing. So there are seasons that come when it's not all glitter and bliss. There are some very difficult times we go through, but we still need to focus on the fact that God is still in control and His purpose can only be fulfilled if we suffer through those winter days clinging to the cross for our support. Solomon starts off in chapter 3 by saying, For everything there is a season and a time for every matter under heaven. As I study the Bible, I see several stories kind of come together as like pathways of truth moving in the same direction. This verse, like many other verses, flow towards our relationship with God and how much we trust Him instead of really what we see in front of our eyes. Do we think that matters of suffering and joy are just situational and revolve around pure circumstance? Or do we truly believe that God is in complete control and every season brings us closer to Him? Verse 3, 2, Solomon says, There is a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to pluck what was planted. Every day we are all in a season of either planting or reaping the benefits of what you planted. You can't spend all your days reaping. You know what I'm saying? You have to toil. You have to get dirty sometimes. Life is gritty. You're going to get some dirt in the fingernails from time to time. You have to prepare the fields, sow some seeds, water some ground, and most importantly, pray for increase. Growing does not happen without growing pains, right? Right? There has to be some hard times in order to enjoy good times. That's what this message is. Seasonal change produces growth. Verse 3, Solomon says, There is a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. Guys, the upside to every storm is that it produces life. My mother was really the backbone of our family. After my father passed away early in my life, my mother raised four kids by herself. Four. She was the most loving and strong woman any son could ever grow up with and learn from. After she went home to be with the Lord, our family was crushed. And it was hard for my siblings because we all leaned on her and never really leaned on each other. Never had to. In the course of time, we came together to be closer, minus sibling rivalries there, but each of us were able to look back on our time that our mother spent with us, and we could laugh and tell stories, and we began to take on the traits she always tried to instill in us growing up. It was like, while she was around, her strength held us together, but after she passed, it was her strength in us that grew. That season of growth may have never happened if we didn't suffer through the very tough season of her passing. 
Now, those of us that are still around rarely go an entire year without getting together for the holidays or something, no matter how far apart we live. We go to church and everything. It's awesome. And my point here in telling you all this is that even though we can't see it happening in real time, God is always at work in our lives, building our character, developing our strength. There is never a time when he is not growing us towards our future with him, no matter what the season. Solomon continues in verse 5, a time to cast away stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to sow, a time to keep silence and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. No matter what you're facing in life right now, God is in control still. He's always in control. All the situations and all the outcomes have been created for you individually. God is the curator of infinite miracles and blessings. He knows you to the very fiber of your being. There is no need in your life that you have that he does not know about. Your entire existence is a working relationship with him. And once you figure that out and hold on to that truth, your winners, well, they get shorter and shorter. We all have to go through turbulent weather weather at times because that's how we grow. We truly need the rain to appreciate the sunshine. Lord Jesus, thank you so much for being with us. We exalt you. We lift you up. We thank you so much for being our sovereign Lord. Lord God, we ask that you strengthen us in turbulent times and you help us to Realize and understand that uh, that you are in control no matter what's happening in our lives, no matter what we see in front of our eyes, no matter what's coming against us. We just give it to you, O oh Lord. We give it to you because we know that through you and in you is the only way that we're going to survive the storms and that we're going to find our way to peace. We thank you and we love you. In your holy name, we ask and we pray. Amen. Take care, everyone. Try to remember as people come against you and act out and try to get under your skin. We don't really know what's going on with them. Okay, all we see is face value there. We don't know what circumstances are surrounding them at the moment, but we do know how to rest in Christ. Remember that the people of this world, they don't have any rest. They can only rely on their own understanding. It takes someone like you to be Christ's reflection and maybe lead them through the season they are facing. May your strength be firm. May your heart be soft. May you always find your way to the cross. Have a great week, guys. Till next time, may God bless us all. Have a wonderful rest of the week. 